Hey, this is Steve Laskovich of Luminous Works, and I have a tip for you today about grep styles. That's a slightly geeky but extremely powerful feature in InDesign to apply character styles for you automatically. All right, let's take a look. Here I am in InDesign, and I'm looking at this text story here. And you might notice that I've got some text that looks a little different. Here's the name of a product. It's a little fancy looking. Uh, you might be able to discern there, there's a URL and it also looks different. And I have character styles for both of those looks and feels. If my cursor is within the name of that product, Super Deluxe Widget, really seductive title there. I look at the character styles panel here and I see that there is a character style applied, not highlighted in the character styles panel, but it says that it's applied by the paragraph style automatically. Same thing is true of the URL. So how? I'm going to right click on the body paragraph style, edit it, and I'm going to dip down into that grep style category. And I have a few here. The one for the URL is a bit fancier than I have time for today, but you might be able to recognize that there are bits and pieces that are often found in a URL. And InDesign is being told to look for anything that resembles a URL pretty much and apply the URL style to it. A little more direct, in fact, a lot more direct is this grep style where it's looking literally for the phrase super deluxe widget. And whenever that's there, whenever it comes up, boom, product character style gets applied for us just like that. There's one more slightly fancier version of this I wanna show you because it starts to introduce the, the code that we can use in a pretty palatable form, more or less. I want you to notice that over here, I got some paragraphs that end uncomfortably with what some people call runts, like very, very short word or, or phrase at the end of that paragraph, not very attractive. And sometimes we'd like to have a little bit more on that last line. And so often we'll do what we'll do is we'll try to keep the last, oh, so many characters from breaking that is, we don't want a paragraph break so that those little bits stay together. So the last line is just a little longer. It's more than just a you know, micro thought. So what I have here for this text, and I figured out how much text I'd like to keep together, I have the beginnings of a query. And that is, I have a dot. What is a dot? It means any character. Now, I didn't necessarily know that going in, but luckily there's a menu over here that helps me build this. I can go to wild, car wild cards, choose any character, and it'll throw a dot in there. And I've learned that a dot means any character. And I've also learned that a number in curly braces means how many of those. And when I have a specific number in mind, I might do that. And finally, there's a dollar sign. And it means, in this case, end of paragraph. Now, I didn't just know this. I wasn't born with this knowledge. Again, there's uh, all kinds of ways to build such a query with these various helpers over here, and plus many, many resources online, which I'll tell you about more later. So here I've got this text query looking for this bit of code, and to that I want to apply a certain style. And I made a style called Don't Break. And when I apply that, and of course, it, I'm looking out there to see the result. And of course, it doesn't show it because this interface is kind of crappy. You have to click somewhere else first. But when I do, and my preview is on, as you can see down here, I look out at my text and I see that now I have more than a micro thought at the end of each paragraph. That's pretty cool. Well, it's mostly cool. And the reason I say that is I have a particularly short paragraph here. And in a novel, you might have very short paragraphs for, say, dialogue. And in this case, I don't want the last 10 characters, which is what that grep query is saying, the last 10 characters at the end of the paragraph, to be glued together. In that case, I want to make an exception. So notice I have a second, or actually it's fourth, but it's a following grep style right here that follows this one. And this one has a little caret, which means beginning of paragraph. The dot means any character and 85, 90, 85 to 90 of them. So the first 85 to 90 characters, I'm going to choose to let them break as they want. And when I click somewhere else, that super short paragraph then is allowed to break. And here's the weirdest thing. That 
last little bit, the last 10 characters of that paragraph actually have two styles applied to them simultaneously. If I click in the last 10 characters, I'll see down here it says mixed. So which one wins? The last one. So the one that says do break wins over the previous one. And it turns out there are also other ways to automatically apply character styles, and there's a whole hierarchy to that. But we could take advantage of this hierarchy for fun, too. This was a very practical one, and that's the one you should probably take away. But I also have a less practical but more fun example to show you, too. You might be familiar with the word game Wordle, in which you try to guess a five-letter word by typing guesses. And if you're clever or lucky, you'll find that the letters you've typed, some of them at least, will be in the word that is to be guessed. So you can see here that there's a G and there's an L in the final word, and the G and an H in the right place. The word is glyph. I'm giving it away. Um, that's not the point of this doing this in InDesign, although this game kind of does work if you don't mind guessing the word glyph over and over. Mostly I want to show you and reinforce how grep styles can override one another if they're done later. Plus, it's a fun little puzzle about a puzzle. So up in the upper left here is how those character styles that I've built look. Uh, here I'm actually using a font that I built, though you can easily go online and probably find a tile-like font if you want to. I actually went to Illustrator and built uh, 26 letters, and then I went to a free open source program called FontForge and built a really cheesy 26 character uh, font with 26 glyphs in it. No more, um, because that's all I really wanted. Um, most people aren't gonna do that, why would you? But anyway, I did, because I did. And so I'm using that font, it's called Tiles, and uh, there it is. So I am first going to show you this word glyph using a style, paragraph style, that doesn't yet have the grep styles in it. That's why everything looks dark. No character style applied to it at all. And there's a return there. So normally if you're actually playing Wordle, you haven't hit return yet. And you will want to type the last letter, hit return, and then you're told whether those letters are in the word or not. In this case, it doesn't work yet because I haven't told this uh, starter style to do it. Here's how that might actually work. I'm going to edit that starter style, go down to grep style. You can see I've started the process a little bit. I have three grep styles, one for each of the three character styles, no dice, then warmer, and then bingo, specifically in that order. For the no dice style here, I'm gonna try to get in there, and I'll put a dot, meaning any character. Because at first I want every character to seem to be not in the word, and then we'll do the exceptions to catch those that are. But if I did this, it wouldn't care if there was a return there or not. Let me show you. If I do that, they all turn the gray, even if there is no return yet. And of course, we don't want anyone getting a clue that their word is the letters are in the word or not yet, so we want to have it wait until, indeed, that there's a return done. Let me pull up a little cheat sheet here, show you where we are so far. So we're doing no dice for a dot, and that's not effective. We have to go farther, and luckily I know a little bit more code here that we can implement. What we're going to implement is something called a positive look ahead. That is this one, showing that there's a return character to follow the character. Now, if I stop there, that means only the last letter just before the return will get styled. What the positive look ahead does for us, it says, don't include this return or whatever else we want to have follow, but just make sure that such a thing exists following the thing we are going to decorate. But I need it to be more than just a return. It might be the, the L over here that we're talking about, or the G, the Y, or the P. So if I were to stop right there, let me show you what this would do. Let me go in here and edit this. Back to grep style. And after that dot, put in that positive um, look ahead. Positive look ahead. And in there, I'll put backslash R. Backslash R, which means return. And you notice that they don't change. What would change? letter just before a return, and only that. 
we need to do better than that. So what will help is a little extra code to say any character but zero or more of them. That would be the P, the Y, the L, or the H, or G, any of those. And then once there is a return, then they'll all become the right gray. I'll add this bit and then we'll switch over to the right style here. So let me edit that style one last time. Edit wordish starter back down to grep style. And I'll augment that to also contain the, the dot asterisk, which again means zero or more times. So either there's a letter there or four of them or five of them or none at all. And I do that and they all turn to that gray meaning none are in the word. Of course, if they are in the word, I wanna be able to note that. So for example, I can say, look, there's a set of characters. So I put square brackets and anything in the square brackets, say, oh, I don't know, a G, an L, a Y, a P, or an H, those should get warmer applied to them because they're in the word. That's pretty cool. But again, I don't want that kicking in until someone hits return. So that's going to need pretty much the same treatment, only if there's a return and other characters there too. So I can throw that in there to make sure that until they hit return, they don't see that. And I'll just demonstrate that one more time here. So let me get rid of that bit. So when they do the H, return. Oh, all those letters are in the word. Yay, yay for me. No, <laughs> this is fun. Um, but I want also, if they're in the right place, not just in the word itself, but in the right place, the right location, I want more. So there's the query we just did. But for a letter that's in exactly the right place, like the letter G being first, I would say, look, if there's a G, and a positive look ahead here saying, following that G, there should be one, two, three, four characters and a return. There are ways to do that more, more succinctly, but I thought that was clear. Then the G is gonna get bingo applied to it like it does there in Gulch. And if it's the second letter, if it's the L, then I'm gonna use what they call a positive look behind, which looks before the letter. And here I want one letter, one character before it, because it's supposed to be L is second, three, following it and a return. And if those conditions are met, bingo. And why two letters before, two letters after, because it's in the middle and so on. And I, you know, it's a little tedious. I did it a little tediously, but it worked pretty nicely. So if I put my cursor into the word glyph and apply the style that I ended up with, it'll show me that I am a winner. And I could post that on Twitter and brag to my good friend and grep expert, Erica. She, she, this is dedicated to her. So with word, Wordlish applied to this, I could type that, hit return, and victory is mine. Hope that was fun. Anyway, I thought it was. Anyway, I hope to see you in my classroom someday. If uh, you can't make it to Seattle and be in my classroom, we also do some of our classes via Zoom. And we also have some that are recorded. So you can take two weeks instead of a couple days to learn the stuff we're teaching. Uh, you won't find Wordle in my classroom, but the other tip you will. Hope you have a good day. This is Steve Laskovich saying so long.